<clears throat> okay, this is a short video uh, that I'm going to talk about the cost of living and or visiting West Africa, Ghana in particular. People ask, uh, how much does it cost to uh, get there? Well, that's most of the cost really is getting there. Um, I have a friend I used to work with at the Internal Revenue, a young lady. She started taking cruises after the first one. She kind of fell in love with cruising, and she would go two or three times a year, seven days and ten days usually, I think. And you know how much a cruise cost is. It depends on what part of the country, from the Midwest, maybe $800 to $1,500, I imagine, it's around that uh, area. So to get to Ghana, again, depending on what part of the country, in East Coast, a little bit cheaper, a little closer. Midwest, I just always uh, bank on around 1,200 round trip, although I have seen Delta, they fly direct to Accra, Ghana, from the East Coast, New York, uh, Washington, Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and I've seen it, it, them go as cheap as $864. That's the cheapest I've ever seen. Usually you can count on around a grand or 1,200 from the Midwest. Could be a little less, a little cheaper, depending on what part of the country you're coming from. Now, once you get to Ghana, uh, you fly into Kotoko International Airport in Accra uh, and the cost of things. I want to just share and talk a little bit about how much it costs to live and or visit. Um, talk about rent first if you want to stay long term. Well, ho well let me, first let me talk about hotels. Um, you can count on spending, say, $25, $30 a night for a modest hotel, which you won't be in all the time anyway. You'll be ripping and running the streets and seeing the sights and meeting people and doing all kinds of fantastic things. You can pay, of course, a lot more, but you can get some place comfortable for, say, $30 a night. I can live cheaper because I don't have to have a whole lot. <laughs> $20 about as low as I'll go. But, but anyway, so that's hotel cost. Say $30 and up, uh, you can spend more, but you'd be comfortable at $30, $35 a night. If you wanted to rent long term uh, in Ghana, you usually have to um, agree to at least a one-year lease. Sometimes they want two years, and you pay it in advance. The good thing is it doesn't cost much. I had a two-bedroom house, uh, semi-detached, meaning that like a row house, one wall of my house attached to the, raw, to the wall of the house next door and on down the promenade or whatever, the street. And it may have been eight houses on my section back behind me, another eight houses all together. It's like 30 houses, separate units. Two bedroom, uh, UT Bank owned the estate, had a wall around the entire compound, uh, maybe six feet high. On top of the wall, it had um, electric wire, you know, for security. It had a gate coming into the compound, they had 24 hour security. They didn't have uh, guns, they weren't armed, so I'm not sure how effective they would have been had the armed robbers come. But at least we had security there. And my two-bedroom, and it was a new place too, my two-bedroom uh, house, I paid, I think, about $110 a month. Two-bedroom, bathroom, toilet, shower, uh, kitchen, big kitchen, living room, big living room, front door, back door, small yard in front, uh, grass on the side with a clothesline, and a little area in the back. I was on the end, so I was kind of up against the wall. But it was a compound, and it was a little over $100 a month. I think it was about 110 I moved from there into a two-bedroom apartment in the same area. Um, it was an um, individual homeowner that owned the property. He didn't live there. He lived on the other side of the air area, metropolitan area. But he had his house that he rented out. It was an income producer. And the big house, the main house, was on ground level and had about eight different rooms inside, and different people rented different rooms. My apartment was two-bedroom, and it was separate from the main house, and it was upstairs overneath the over pharmacy and some other businesses. The pharmacy, beauty salon, the bar was down there. It was an older house, not real old, but it was older and not as nice as the one I moved from, but I liked the area better because it's more intimate. I was closer to my neighbors and I really enjoyed their company and they enjoyed mine. And that two bedroom, uh, one bathroom, two bedroom, uh, hall, kitchen, shower, toilet, the whole thing, I paid $55 a month. Paid it a year in advance, $55 a month. Then I had a five bedroom house on the opposite side of Accra, brand new house, not an old fixer up, brand new five bedroom, four bathroom, um, bathroom in the master bedroom, uh, and three other uh, showers and bathrooms in the, on the property. Big house, big kitchen, big uh, hall, they call them halls, we call them the living room. Um, it was on a plot that was 100 feet by 70 feet. 
um, had a wall around the compound. I'm in a compound. Had a big, like, paved and carport inside. I had a um, summer hut outside with a roof, tile floor, uh, lights uh, on. I had a guava tree, uh, two coconut trees, an avocado tree, a mango tree, mango, mango, uh, and a cocoa tree. And it was landscaped. And I had all of that for $220 a month, paid a year in advance. Uh, utilities anywhere from 10 to $20 a month, and that's usually lights and water. You don't pay a gas bill in Africa, it doesn't get cold. So lights and water, for me, I paid maybe 10, 15, 20 dollars a month, sometimes less, sometimes more. Um, so that's renting in uh, Ghana. Transportation, uh, gas is high, fuel, they say fuel, can't say it like they say, they say fuel. It's higher there than it is in the Midwest, like $4 a gallon, approximately. It doesn't vary, it doesn't go up and down a lot like it does here. It pretty much stays at the same clip for a year or two at a time. So gas is about $4 a gallon, maybe a little bit higher. Uh, public transportation in Accra and Ghana, they use trotros. They're vans that are used for the main mode of transportation. Most people catch them, including me. I like <laughs> trotros. Day and night, 24-7 in the capital, all the time, all day and all night, you can get around, and it's safe. It's just crowded, and it's hot. It might be a little inconvenient for you, depends on what your level of adaptability and comfort is. But the fare on the tro might be anywhere from 50 cents to 2 or 3 dollars, depending on how far you're going. Then they have shared taxis. A shared taxi, all the cars are small in Ghana. Shared taxis, they put three in the back and one in the front seat with the driver, and they run a Pacific route. And you get in at the beginning of the route, normally, once the taxi is full, they start driving. And you can get out anywhere along the route. He goes to a final destination point. You can ride to the end, it's all the same price, doesn't matter where you get out. Once you get in, everybody pays the same price. And it's usually only like a dollar or two for a tro I mean, for a shared taxi. Uh, in fact, it might be less than that, depending on where, how far you're going. And then the other thing is drop taxis. In Ghana, they don't have meters, like we're accustomed to in the U.S. They don't use meters you negotiate the fare. And it can be frustrating if you're not used to bargaining and haggling, but that's the culture. So when you stop a taxi, and they're everywhere, 24-7, you can get around, and they will stop for you. It ain't like they see you and they get afraid and they pass you up. They hurriedly stop for you in Ghana. And you tell them, tell the driver where you're going, he sees you from outside, he sees you in America, he thinks you got money and the price goes way up. But you don't have to accept that. He goes way up here, if he tells you give him 50 CDs, you offer him 20 CDs or 15 CDs. And then you just go back and forth and haggle it until you arrive at a, a price that you both can live with. And so uh, drop taxis is what they call them. And you're the only one in there. He takes you directly where you want to go. It might be anywhere from 2 or $3 to 10 or $15, just depending on how far you're going. They're really not very expensive, not compared to here. Uh, prices at the beach. Labadi Beach is the main beach in uh, Accra, Ghana, the capital. And on the weekends, Labadi is 10 CDs, it was the last time I was there, and that's about $2.50. Uh, during the week, it's free. And at the beach, the ocean, all kind of people, young people mainly, uh, they got food vendors, they got clothes vendors, they selling alcohol, they got a masseuse, they got a massage parlor, they got um, um, uh, liquor, you know, they come to the waiters and the waitress is steady going to come and bring the bottles of beer to you. Um, so that's Labadi Beach. Now there's a lot of beaches. Uh, Tawala Beach is not far from Labadi, but they got beaches all over. Ghana has 500 miles of, of, um, of uh, ocean, um, facing ocean, 500 miles of Ghana, uh, beachfront, uh, ocean, <laughs> ocean facing, I'm not sure how to say it. And so there's a lot of beaches in the city and other places too, and most of them are free actually. And all of them selling liquor and food, and it's a real fun place to, uh, to go and to hang out. Clubs, most of them are free. They got a few to charge, a couple charge, but the most expensive ones, they got a couple of strip joints there, uh, girly girl clubs, and they just hanging out, dancing, doing different stuff. I, probably, I never had, I've been in one, I didn't go in the other one. One is called Jokers, it's not far from the body beach, and the cover charge at Jokers is like 20 CDs. Ghana City is about $5. And the other one, Hot Gossip in Osu, it's about the same price, $5 to get in, drinks are $5 which is high in Ghana, because most clubs are free, and most of the beer, you get a pint size, big bottle of beer, for about $2.50, 10 Ghana CDs at the club, and at the bars, and at restaurants. A smaller bottle might be seven or eight CDs, uh, maybe $2 or $1.50, something like that. And they got shots, they got local apoteshi, local gin, and 
they got high shelf stuff, Hennessy and all that kind of stuff too, and I don't drink it, so I don't know how much it costs, but no more than it is here and probably not as much. Uh, electric and water bills not high if you got a house, $10, $20 a month probably. Uh, pint of beer, you know, the other kind of beer. Shea butter and black soap. A lot of Americans, a lot of us know about shea butter. Some of us know about the black soap. And of course they make it there, that's where it comes from. And I'm not gonna tell you how, what the price is because it's very inexpensive and people here are selling it, they're in business. And once you know too much about a person's business, some of us don't want to shop with them, think they're getting beat or whatever, and they're not. But the price is very reasonable, it's very inexpensive in Ghana, just like a Mercedes. If you go to Germany, it costs a whole lot less than if you buy it in New York or LA or Kansas City because you're buying it where they produce it. And when you get to the source of things, it's always cheap, including shea butter and black soap. And they got it everywhere, it's all over the place. Uh, African outfits, get, have, buying clothes, you can buy them, pants, shirts, dresses, scarves, all kind of stuff handbags uh, ready-made at different places, shops and uh, art, art, artsy kind of uh, places like the art, the art, uh, what do you call it, the art something in Accra, the art center in Accra, they got all kind of stuff, all kind of fabric and everything. Uh, so you can buy ready-made stuff, but the best thing is to uh, buy fabric, take it to the tailor or seamstress and have them make you an outfit. And they probably charge between $20 and $25 for the labor and then you buy the fabric. And I'm not gonna say how much the fabric is, it's not a big deal, but when you get there, you can find out it's cheaper than it is here. Doesn't cost a whole lot. So you buy the fabric, pick out your colors and patterns and all kind of stuff, find your seamstress there everywhere or a tailor, take it to them, it only takes them two or three days usually, and have it uh, made, whether it's a two piece up and down for a man, or one piece for a lady, or a dress and a skirt, or a whole suit. I've got a suit made out of Kenti fabric, double weave, uh, Kenti. Um, years ago, and it's the most beautiful thing I've ever owned in terms of uh, item of clothing. It's absolutely gorgeous. And the guy made it, I bought the, the Kenti material in the Kenti village up north on the other side of Komasi. Uh, forget the name of it, but it's known as being a place where Kenti weavers are there by the dozens and they have shops set up and you can go in and you can watch them clickety-clack cl clickety on the machines and actually weave the Kenti material. And it's for sale. There are big boats up. You buy like 10 yards at a time. So I bought big 10 yard boats, a couple of them, and had a suit made. And it's absolutely gorgeous. But you can buy fabric a lot cheaper than Kenti. Kenti is very expensive, even in Africa. So you buy your fabric, you take it to the tailor, you pay him 10, 20 dollars, and they hook it up, and it's a done deal. So that's on the clothes. Also, wood products. Very beautiful wood in Ghana. My God, I'm sure other African countries too. Seise wood, mahogany wood, ebony woods. A lot of seisei wood is a lighter wood, more pliable, easier to carve. You can have tables and chairs and masks and have it made and, you know, even just buy it already made. Uh, I bought a bed, a uh, wooden bed, not like the, the frame we have here. And then you buy the headboard separate here. There it's all, you buy it all together. But it's all out of wood, including the slats. And it's very good quality and very beautiful. I think I paid like $50. Might cost you a little bit more, $50, $75. You can get a nice, I think mine was a full size. You can get uh, hand-carved uh, coffee tables, and really you can get anything you want if you want to have it made, including furniture, and usually you have your furniture made. They do it on the side of the road, couches and um, chairs, big cushiony and, you know, comfortable and love seats, and they don't cost much. I had the, uh, the couch, um, two chairs. I didn't get the love seat, but I did get the couch and the two chairs made. I can't remember how much I paid for it, maybe $100 or $200 for the whole set. Uh, so furniture makers are everywhere. Wood, wood is everywhere. Uh, mattresses, I bought a freezer. I think I paid $225 for the freezer. Refrigerator would be about the same. They got TVs, flat screens, the whole thing if you're there trying to live uh, and stay any length of time. Gold jewelry. I didn't get this in Ghana, but I got some from Ghana. I should have put it on. Uh, gold rings, and I got this in Ghana. This is uh, called Genyami probably can't see it, but it's called genuinely the symbol. It means accept God. It's 18 karat gold. Here in the U.S. mainly is, I think it's 14 karat, maybe some 10 and 12. All of it in Ghana is 18 karat. It's like in Europe too, it's 18 karat. The gold comes from Ghana. They're the second highest producer of gold in the world, the raw material. So the price is less there. So whatever you buy at the jewelry store, if you go to the right places, you probably expect to pay maybe half of the price that you would pay if you got it in the jewelry store in the U.S and it's high quality gold. Um, and they, in fact, they can design it and they can make it. You can show them what you want and they can make you a piece of gold, whether it's a, a pendant or a ring or anything that you want, a bracelet, they can make it. 
and it's 18 karat gold. Bottle of Coke at the um, at a bar restaurant, um, about 50 cents for a regular size Coke bottle. I guess it's 12 ounces. Uh, let's see, land prices. If you want to buy land in Ghana, and you can buy land in Ghana, you can build a house in Ghana. Land prices vary. Uh, on the low end, probably expect to pay around fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars for a plot that's a hundred feet one way and seventy feet the other way, seven thousand square feet, which is more land than they have these houses placed on in urban areas in America. They, where, where I grew up, they're around 3,000 square feet. In Africa, they're about 7,000, more than double the space. And land there is like land here, real estate. It's location, location, location is going to determine the price. I've seen land that sells for a million dollars for a plot. Uh, most of it doesn't, but they do have it like that there too. But you can probably expect to pay on the low end 1,500 for a plot. And uh, I wouldn't, well, I wouldn't say what I wouldn't pay, but um, you can get a good plot in the city for say five, ten thousand dollars In fact, you can get beachfront property in Ghana probably for $10,000 to $15,000. In America, you have to be a millionaire to live at the beach. In Ghana, not so, because the beach isn't as valued there as it is here. Outsiders value it, and some of the locals do too, but not many, not like they do here. So you can get beachfront property, ten or 15000 for a plot, maybe even less. Um, you can build a house. I know people who have spent a quarter of a million for one house and they got a mansion and a palace. You don't have to spend that much. Um, you can build hotels, you can build a house, you can build an apartment, but say something modest, a two or three bedroom house. You buy your land, maybe you spend five, ten thousand dollars for your land, and then build your house. Probably a modest two, three bedroom, maybe, maybe forty thousand dollars. I don't know, maybe a little cheaper, maybe a little bit more, but it's not nothing like it would be here to build one. Here, that $40,000 house that you build here, uh, that you build there, would probably depend on what city you're in. Kansas City is a low, it does, the real estate's not very, it does, it's not a high-end area, it's not a costly city, uh, like New York, California, Chicago, DC, places like that. So in Kansas City, where it's not that expensive, that $40,000 house you build in Ghana, well, it probably cost you about 175000 if you built it here, maybe a couple hundred thousand. So you can do pretty well there. Uh, with real estate and houses. So these are just some of the costs uh, for those who are interested in Ghana, in Africa, going, which you should go, you should investigate, look deeper into it. It doesn't cost a whole lot, um, you know, um, eating in a restaurant, uh, okra stew, uh, ground nut uh, uh, soup, a uh, stew, uh, plantain and beans, a uh, cabbage stew, uh, stew and rice, or what a lot of rice in Ghana. You can eat at restaurants, a lot of chop bars. Chop bars are mom and pop places. They have them everywhere, like a lot of places. When they're on the street, the food is good, it's delicious, uh, very good, in fact, spicy. You know, I like spicy and hot, and it's like that in Ghana. So you can eat at restaurants on the street, maybe a dollar, two, you know, and up. Um, I did, on, on average, between one and five dollars. Five dollars is like 20 Ghana cities. In most places, you're not gonna spend 20 Ghana cities. Although they have upscale hotels and restaurants and places, if you like that kind of thing, they're there and you can spend a lot more. But at shop bars and um, smaller restaurants that are plentiful, that's everywhere where most people eat, you could expect to spend between five and, no, really between a dollar and probably four dollars for a meal that will fill you up and then your drinks are extra. So food is cheap, bananas, the, the fruit is delicious. It's, you know, I, I almost spit the fruit out when I come back to the U.S the bananas and the uh, mangoes and the avocados. I almost don't want, I mean, I'm a, I don't eat meat, so I love uh, fruit. But the taste here, there is no taste compared to there. Things grow in Africa and they're cheap. They don't cost avocados like this for maybe 35, 40 cents versus a little bitty one like this for $2 here. Bananas look funnier, they're smaller, but they're sweeter. The pineapples are actually absolutely delicious. Oh man, everything is fresh. Nothing came, nothing processed, nothing frozen. Everything is fresh. So the food is good. Yes, it is. Prices are reasonable. Get in there is one thing. Hotel, maybe $30 a night. 10 days at $30, that's $300 plus, say, a grand to get there, that's $1,300. And then your daily expenses, which are not very much depending on your lifestyle, what you're looking into. Uh, if you want to buy stuff, bring it back to sale. That's available. You can do that get good prices on. Beads are big in Africa, jewelry beads, bead jewelry, 
um, shea butter, you know, soap, all kind of stuff. So those are some of the things, some of the prices. I'm gonna make another video shortly, uh, talking about some other aspects of the culture, things you can expect, things that you would enjoy, places to see, things to take advantage of. Hope you appreciate it. Hope you liked it. The information. Keep tuned in. I'm gonna keep sharing. Keep moving. Keep traveling. Keep rolling. Keep doing it. Rolling with the hot sauce. That's it.